So three years into Eurorack, a lot has changed. I'm trying every year uh, around May to make this sort of an update video. 2019 at Superbooth, uh, I came back home with this case actually, and a few modules and my journey with Eurorack uh, started. Um, yeah, so I want to give you a few updates, what changed, why it changed, I sold a few modules, why I sold them, I got a few modules, why I got them, I actually moved back, moved back to 7U from 13U, which is, <laughs> uh, which is quite, quite cool, um, yeah, and I want to speak also a bit about VCAs, um, I have here Vinco, Vinza, Formin Struo, and I have a few things to say about VCAs, um, so let's have a look. So as I already mentioned, this was the original case I started with, the 7U. It's uh, the IntelliJ 7U case. I only moved, all what I did is move the one euro to the center, which is amazing. If you do it, by the way, and something goes wrong, please don't uh, blame me. Do it in your own uh, your responsibility. But what I did, I changed the one euro in the center. Uh, there is no drilling needed or anything. You just uh, disconnect it from the upper row and bring it here to the center and the modules themselves, they hold it into place. You see, it's really, really stable. You can patch and unpatch, it's not moving one bit. Now this allows me, I don't know, I feel like I'm patching the one U, I'm using the one U or uh, modules, the one U row, much more than I did before when it was in the center. It's a small case, but still, even though having it on the way between the uh, both uh, rows, really opens up a whole new world of possibilities just visually, even just by looking at it. I just go I, um, from the one euro, I don't have to go from the button to the one U and then back. And um, so really, it's really much more comfortable like this. Again, um, it's not uh, supported by IntelliJ or anything. And um, so it's not meant to be, of course, if you are using the MIDI or the audio from your case, the seven U case, I don't, I don't think it will work because the connections are too far away. But anyway, so this is the 7U case from IntelliJ. This is my main case now. I moved back from 13U. I had, if you saw the video from last year, I moved to 13U uh, from MDLR. So it was 12, it was four uh, rows basically, and another one, another one U at the top, which was really un uncomfortable. Um, I will never do something like this again. If I get a bigger case, always one U between the, the rows. It's much more comfortable than somewhere up or down. Anyway, it was visually, the 13 U, I felt like it was visually too much for me. It was visually overwhelming. I sat there in front of the case and I didn't know where to begin. It took me much, much longer to patch because I had many more modules. And again, I was I felt like I'm really slower in this I have to think much more instead of just grabbing cables and connecting like I do with the 7U. And also I felt like I'm, I'm missing something, I'm missing the purpose of modular a bit because I felt like I'm just connecting one module to another without exploring really the modules more deeply, I guess. And because I had choices, I had many more choices. Of course, 13U, that's a lot of modules, especially if you have smaller modules. And it was just, I, I just felt like I'm missing the point of modular, basically, of interconnecting, of exploring modules more deeply. Um, yeah, so I decided, it took me a while, but after a while I decided, okay, that's it, I'm going back to 7U. So I went back to 7U and then um, I'm really happy that I could sell also the case because now, now someone else who really needs it uh, can enjoy it. So I went back to 7U, I sold a few modules, I will show you later also the modules I sold and why. I sold a few modules, but I didn't sell everything, so I still have some modules. So this is the main case, now it's set up in such a way, I'm working on a series of videos about uh, patching techniques. So I gathered all the modules I need to show all of the techniques. Um, this is why it says like this. Usually what I will do, I have two other cases. I have the 3U Recruit from Arturia and I have the Moog or Moog um, case, which I use most of the time just to keep the modules in place until I switch with the 7U. So this is my palette, more or less. This is my easel, this is my instrument, and I can switch between modules when I want, explore the instrument, explore the modules and switch again. 
Um, so this is the main instrument. I want to show you now the um, other cases. So the first case I want to show you is a, another case that I use all the time. I call it my interface case. This is a Doppler case that should be like this actually most of the time because it has here the power and all of the stuff. It doesn't sit, it's not sitting so nicely like this on the table, but anyway, this is how I use it. Um, and I have my interface modules here. So I have a hybrid setup. I'm using Bitwig, I'm using VCVREC, um, mostly, mostly for multi-track recording and reverbs and stuff like this. Um, so I can multi-track everything and then mix it uh, properly without uh, any issues. It's much easier to uh, mix when you have all of the different stems. Right, so I'm using the ES9 for this to interface between the uh, case and the computer. Now I had the ES9 in the main, in the 7U case and in the 30U case, um, but I found uh, um, that it's much more helpful having it in a separate case um, first of all, because it's quite big, so it takes space, of course. It's quite power hungry. I think it's about 500 milliampere, which is a lot for a module. And I also, it's, it also reduces the risk for uh, from noise, right? Sometimes you get noise from other modules. Uh, this is how it works in Unirac, I guess. Um, having it in its own case reduces the risk of noise and it works perfectly. Actually, Originally, I had a case, a custom case made just for the ES9. This was made from too many synths, which is perfect. You see when my logo is here. I did pay for it, so it's not sponsored or anything, but they did a really good job. Um, I think the next custom case will also come from them, right? I have uh, I had ventilation holes here, and uh, basically the ES9 set here, right, with this module here, this here from TipTop for the power, and it was amazing. But then I decided that I want a few more modules there, so this was just too small. Maybe I will use it for something else, but I still have it. And then there were a few other modules. So first of all, still the power module is here because this uh, case from Doffer, actually all cases from Doffer, I'm not so sure why, they don't have enough power, I guess. I mean, maybe it's enough if you have just analog modules, but I have many digital modules as well, and it's not enough. So anyway, I'm using this one from TipTop, the MicroZeus. And I have here the instrument interface from Befaco, which I use uh, to connect my flute, I use to connect my bass guitar, different acoustic instruments, a mic, maybe sometimes also. All sorts of different things. It has an envelope follower, it can amplify, it has even phantom power, which is great when I uh, record my flute, uh, because I have a condenser that needs phantom. So this is great, a great module, I really like it. Uh, it's quite fun. And I have also the VCMC from Befaco, which I use in this case as a MIDI controller. Basically, I have eight faders that I can use, right? I can map to Bitwig or VCVREC or whatever I need. And I have also buttons that can be either momentary or latch, which is also quite helpful. So I have eight buttons and eight faders. This is for now what I'm using because everything is in one case. I don't need anything else on the table, no MIDI controllers, no any other stuff, right? And I have it here and it feels quite too nice also. Um, right, so this is another case that I'm using. Again, I. I don't know, I recommend if you are using ES9, ES8, something like this, having it in its own case. And um, there are also smaller cases, I guess you can buy again. You can also do something, um, a custom case if you want. It really reduces noise and it saves you a lot of power and space. Okay, so this is one case that I'm using all the time. So this is another case I have. This is the rec root from Arturia. Again, I usually use it just for a placeholder for other modules when I switch with the main case with the 7U. Um, but I also sometimes, you can save here also nearly everything is connected. I also have sometimes, I'm using it sometimes uh, together with the 7U when I want to make generative patches, for example, where I need more voices. Or just like this one, I want to experiment with different modules and I don't want to change the seven new case all the time. Right, so what I have here, I have, uh, I'm not so sure they are released yet, two new modules from Vult, two sequencers um, from Vult should be released. I hope I can show you. Um, I hope I can show you them, but I'm pretty sure they got released already. Um, so uh, two uh, sequencers from Vult. I have another Freak, also in the seven new I have a Freak which is a stereo filter, but with all sorts of different filter types, also distortion. It 
has a built-in VCA, um, all sorts of different things uh, you can do with it. It can be stereo, it can be dual, it can, you can have four filters actually, so you can have two filters on the left, two filters on the right. Anyway, I have two of them, which is amazing. Uh, it's an amazing module I really recommend if you're looking for a stereo filter that can do a bit more, but not, but not too much menu diving. I mean, there is not really, a, not many um, uh, menus here. Um, I really recommend this. Uh, I hope I hope you can still produce them because of everything that's going on in the world, of course. Um, uh, Wolf, also from Vult, Wave Shaper. Um, I'm pretty sure he's not producing them anymore. Uh, you should check the Vult website. And then I have Arbor and uh, the Loop Performance True, which I use all the time. I switch them also in the main case. Uh, again, for now, the main case is set for the series of videos I'm working on. So those two are out of there. Um, at the moment, but again, I'm using the rec boot also in conjunction with the 7U. You can see it's upside down because my power is to the right, so it's much easier like this. Um, so this is the rec boot. So this is another case that I have, and uh, this is the Moog case. You can see the modules here are not connected because I'm not using this case at all. It has no power, so I need another power uh, module. It's quite shallow also. Uh, I don't know which camera. <laughs> it's quite shallow also, so uh, it's not for all modules. And also it has sliding nuts, which I hate, basically. <laughs> I really don't like sliding nuts. It's um, it's so uncomfortable to, to switch modules and connect them and place them and whatnot. It's not for me. Uh, I know some people uh, are in love with sliding nuts. It's not for me. And I'm not using this case. I do have the poly end anywhere, which is also upside down, which I can basically connect to a USB, um, how is it called? The USB, not hub, um, some, a USB something <laughs> that can give it power, right? So I can take it outside. I did it a few times last year. Um, I took the case with me out uh, to the forest, to the woods, to the lake. And I recorded a few things, which was fun, and now it's becoming warmer again, so maybe I will do it uh, again. So I'm keeping the poly end anywhere. I think you cannot get it anymore. They don't uh, produce it. Um, power bank, so a USB bank. All right, USB bank. Anyway, um, so I'm not using it. Maybe maybe I will use it again. Now it's becoming uh, warmer. So basically, this case I got for this purpose, to take it out with a, a poly end anywhere and play out a bit, which worked fine. But again, I don't like the sliding nuts and it's quite shallow, and uh, maybe the, the USB brick, brick, bank, brick, never mind, USB brick that I used, I didn't have enough power maybe. So I'm not using this case, it's just a placeholder for modules that just don't fit the 7U. Again, I moved from 13U to 7U, which means that I had to, I wanted actually to sell, I need to sell more, I just don't know what to sell. Um, because I just don't have space. Um, I have here but modules that I use a lot. Again, the main case, the seven new case, is set now for a series of videos that I'm working on, so it's set in a specific, um, with specific setup. But here I have Psych that I use all the time from Instruo. I have here the uh, dual attenuverter from EMS, and I believe they are not for sale. I got them... Um, um, from a friend who makes them also. Um, but basically it's dual attenuverter, uh, two attenuverters offset and inversion, which is amazing. I have two, so I have one in the 7U and one here for now. I have the ST mix from Befaco stereo mixer, which is amazing also for CV. I have the sample drum, which I, I'm not using a lot, but I'm not selling it because I plan to put it in a case um, for live performances, because I think it's amazing for live and not for the studio, maybe not so much. But for live situations, because you can save all sorts of different uh, presets here with different samples and different performance um, settings. So I think I think I have to dig deeper. I have it for quite a long time. It has a really nice slicing um, feature, which is cool, but I keep it for when I will maybe sometime perform live. Then I have a Thero from Instruo, which is a wave folder, which I use a lot. LED Rover, which I have here. I don't have space, as you can see. <laughs> I have here Reduxer and Land Rover from um, Voice S, which I use all the time. Reduxer is great also for 
um, transitions, so transitioning from one part to another by sample rate reduction and stuff like this, and also for sound design, um, and also led rover great for sound design, CV input for this. I have this modus versio, and here I have also emitter versio. I don't really like emitter versio, but I'm not selling this module because of the different firmwares. I love this modus versio. And I'm just waiting for a nice firmware that I will uh, put in here. I don't like the other, the sort of the smodus like, I forgot how it's called, also a reverb. But there is a third party firmware for this, uh, Opala, I kicked the camera, third party for uh, like a looper, granular looper or something like this. So maybe I will uh, test this. So I'm not selling it for now. But if I will have to sell something, I guess the emitter versa will be one. Then I just got recently the noise plethora from the fuck who I fell in love with it in VCV, VCV rec. And I just, I, it's amazing. It's an amazing module. I didn't think I will love noise so much, um, but it just, it sounds great. The filters are analog, which uh, it's rounding a bit the digital harshness of the, of the noise. CV inputs almost for everything. I use it all the time. Modulation source, uh, sound source, all uh, sorts of things. Really like it. And the Morphogen, I think it's the first time that it left the uh, main case because of the setup that I have now. This is the first module I got three years ago. It's still here. I'm still using it all the time. I love Morphogen. And again, I think it's the first time it left the main case. And um, this is a tip I have if you want uh, it, the pitch knob, the very speed knob, is not so stable, the original one. So I changed it with the bigger one. This I got for my Neutron, for my Berlinger Neutron. And it's much more stable and it's much, it's much easier also to dial in the different values. So I recommend if you have a Morphogen and you find it unstable, consider switching for a bigger knob. I guess you can get the same, like something from the QPS or something. I think there are bigger knobs that look the same, so you can get it. And the STO, actually, I don't, I, don't, I don't remember if I got it recently or also last year I had it, but I also use it all the time. I love the STO. We'd get two, actually, if I had a space because it just sounds amazing. And sound design ideas everywhere. Sound design ideas everywhere. What was this sentence? I just <laughs> I meant to say that it's great also for sound design, even though it's small, not so many features uh, like other oscillators, but you can do a lot with it. And I have here another module that I have no space for, which is a Strymon Magneto, which I love and I will not sell, even though I have no space. And if I don't use it in my music, I will use it for sound design. I will find space for it because it's just amazing. I love it. Um, I did consider at one point to get the new reverb also, but it's just too big. And I don't have so many reverbs actually, because I prefer to add reverb after the fact, and also after the fact, and also a seven U case, um, it's just it's too big of a module, I guess. So this is again another case that I have that I use just as a placeholder for now, and I switch with the um, seven U. So I want to speak a bit about a few of the modules that I sold and why I sold them. Again, moving from thirteen U to seven U, um, I had to sell a few modules. I kept many, as you've seen. <laughs> I have two cases still. Um, so I kept many modules, but I did, I sold a few modules and I want to speak a bit about why. So the first one is the ADEC 112. It's a granular processor and looper. You can see it on the screen. Um, I sold it, first of all, because again, moving to 7U, I didn't have a lot of space. It's quite big, as you can see. Um, but it's a really interesting and deep granular module, not as much as a looper. I mean, it's also a looper, but not as deep as it is granular, which is amazing. You can save presets and morph between the presets and all sorts of different things. It's amazing also for live performances. But again, it was just too big. There was one point where I thought about having it in a case of its own, but there was one reason uh, that kept me from doing this and that, that it has no polyphony. I think granular with polyphony is just um, the perfect combination for sound design, all sorts of different pads and stuff like this. And I, it was really surprising uh, uh, to me that it had no polyphony, like some sort of MIDI input that you can play multiple notes. It's a shame because it's such a big module and uh, so many CV inputs and stuff like this, uh, but still has no polyphony. So I decided to sell it and someone else is enjoying it now, I hope. And 
I have Arbor also, which is all the granular I need. Arbor from Instruo is an amazing granular module, perfect for live performances, perfect for live recordings and stuff like this. Um, it sounds amazing. I love it. I use it all the time. It also has no polyphony, um, but if I have to keep one granular, then it will be Arbor. And if I want... A granular with polyphony that I guess I can get this uh, synthesizer, this, how is it called, the GR1, I guess, from Tasty Chips, which is a really deep granular synth, and it has also polyphony. So if I want something, maybe I will go for it. Um, the next granular module that comes out and it has no polyphony, I don't think I will get it, um, because I have Arbor. Again, I have also MicroSelf. I don't know if you can see it. The picture is there on top. But I have also Microsoft, which is also amazing. So the first module I saw was the ADEC 112. Again, a big module had no space for it and no polyphony. The next one was Scion from Instruo. I got Scion, Scion quite a long time ago because I wanted to take it out and use it with mushrooms and plants. And I did, actually, I have a few recordings. Uh, if you look on my channel, I have a few recordings where I recorded outside and I used... Uh, mushrooms and I used different plants to create, to generate CV basically with the sensor that you get with it. Basically you plug it, you connect it, uh, you hold it on a plant and it generates a CV according to the bio uh, feedback uh, signals or something like this. It works really nicely, it works amazingly actually and I had a lot of fun with it but I used it only outside in the studio. You can use it, you can plug white noise into it and then you have sample and hold. I didn't really need this sample and hold or random uh, signals and also it felt like a bit like basically random voltages. I have a quantizer. I don't know if you can see it here. Maybe I can move this a bit. This one from ADEC that I used with it. So everything was anyway quantized. And it felt a bit like I can get the same results with sample and hold and some sort of generative clock. I mean, it was fun. It was nice. It was interesting also to sit outside and to listen to what's going on. Um, but I decided because I'm not using it in the studio, I decided to sell it. Um, so I sold also Scion. The next one is Bids for Mutable Instrument. Um, I don't know what to tell you about Bids. <laughs> I, I, I just didn't connect with Bids. I had really high hopes for it because it's the sort of uh, um, Clouds 2 or something, an upgraded version of Clouds. Maybe in a way it is, maybe in a way it sounds, or the quality quality is better, although I'm sure most people use the, the so, what's called the tape quality, uh, so it doesn't matter. I just couldn't connect with it, I couldn't use it, I didn't use it. Two main reasons actually, first one was how it's... Um, auto adjusts the gain, the input gain. You connect something to it and it will uh, automatically adjust the gain, which I didn't like because usually when I connected something, it was silent. For example, if I connected my guitar or my flute or a different sequence or something like this, or, or you know, something, usually it was silent or a piano from the computer. And I had to connect it and quickly, quickly play the instrument um, just so it could adjust the gain. I, I, I didn't really like this idea. And, and especially also for live situations, when you disconnect and connect again, then the gain changes. If you connect a different instrument, just imagine all of a sudden it's really loud or all of a sudden it's really low. I didn't enjoy this feature. And another feature that I thought was not really necessary is the wavetable. I mean, I guess there was a bit more CPU or whatever left or memory or whatever it is left for more features and there was there were wavetables that were not really connected to anything i think there were ta wavetables from plats i don't really understand why but okay it, it was there but the problem is for me at least was that it they will just start um oscillating after a while when the nothing is connected to the input so imagine you are in a live situation or you're in live recording, or you want a, a sort of a performance, and you have nothing connected, all of a sudden you have wavetables running, oscillating. I didn't, I, I couldn't understand why. Maybe now there is already a firmware update where it's, uh, you can choose if to have a wavetable or not. So I, I just, I sold it. I, it. It took me a while because I felt like I'm, like it's, uh, like I'm doing something wrong. 
um, but I guess it was the I just couldn't connect with the module so I sold it I hope someone else is enjoying it now uh, so this was bids another one is plats I got plats because I wanted something again for outside like a voice so I don't need many modules I have everything in one I I just again also here I just couldn't connect I use plat sometimes in VCVREC but in VCVREC it makes sense in hardware it was like I don't know it just didn't make sense to me this the sound it had too many modes uh, that to choose from I didn't like it I don't like really modules that have that can do too many things um yeah so I decided to sell it again I needed the space and I didn't use it so much so I sold it another one which I uh, really loved is the DLD I, I look here all the time because the picture is there for me the DLD from uh, for MS the dual looping delay which is an amazing module it's a delay it's a looper carpless strong really you can do so many things with it I sold it first of all because it was too big again moving from 30 new to 7 new but but I would keep it if the feedback feedback input and output or our inputs and outputs because it's stereo would work as I would expect because they work a bit weird the dry signal will always come through never mind if you have something connected or not so imagine you have in the feedback loop a filter or something it will affect it will not affect the dry signal which is a bit it was a bit weird for me because that was the whole fun I guess of a feedback loop that it affects I mean it it will not it's not that it's not affecting the dry of course it's not affecting the dry but even if the wet was all the way up still the dry signal would come through I don't know there was something weirder um, after a while I understood that there is a firmware that changes this behavior but I, I tried a few times different days to install it I couldn't install the firmware so I just gave up and I said okay I'm going to sell it which is a bit of a shame because again it's an amazing module um, but I just couldn't understand how the feedback feedback loops are working. I know Chronoblob 2 from all right devices, from VCVREC, and there the feedback loop is working amazingly, and I thought it would work the same just in stereo, but it didn't, so I sold it eventually. Another module I sold, and I'm really happy about, is the Disting Mark IV. Now, the Disting Mark IV is an, is an amazing module, especially if you have a small case, because it can do so many things, right? So you can use it as envelope, as delay, as reverbs, uh, as so many things, comparators, whatever you want. But I don't like having modules that can do so many things. It's always so hard for me to choose one thing out of so many other things, and I never used it. I never used it. I just I couldn't bring myself to choose something. And the lists, and you go and you say, okay, this is the algorithm, and what it does, and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> It was, I'm so happy I, I sold it. Again, it's an amazing module. I don't think it's a bad module, but it just didn't work for me. And I'm so happy I don't have to deal with the lists and everything anymore and what the algorithm is and what it's not. And anyway, there's a new disting now that uh, should be better, but I'm not going to get it. It's mainly because, again, it can just do, do uh, too many things for me to uh, decide. And um, so those are the modules that I sold. Uh, I guess all of them, uh, maybe I forgot one or two. Um, now I want to show you the modules that I got. So there are a few new modules that I got that I want to mention. So first of all, we saw Noise Plethora. I really fell in love with Noise with this module. Um, I used it a lot in VCVREC and then I decided to get it in hardware. I really recommend it. Even if you don't uh, like Noise, go in VCVREC. It's available for free. VCVREC is free. Noise Plethora is free. You can check it out. Of course, in hardware, uh, the filters are analog, so this, it sounds a bit different, but still you can just check the, uh, all the features and if you like it or not. Um, I really fell in love with it and fell in love with noise another module we saw already is the instrument interface from Befaco, which i used to bring in acoustic instruments like my flute bass guitar all sorts of different kalimba and stuff like this that i use all the time and also here in the now it's in this setup in the main case i also have them i have neoni also from instruo um, which is probably my favorite oscillator now even more than the STO because it has so many different possibilities, sound design possibilities. It's an amazing modulation source. So you can also use it as a low frequency um, oscillator, uh, so at low frequencies and um, wave folding, all sorts of shaping, um, FM, linear through zero FM, really nice complex uh, modulation source as well. Um, another module is EAS, also from Instruo. 
which is a logic module, which I find really, really uh, interesting to have logic, especially just because it's, uh, not just, but especially because it's uh, 4 HP, or it's just 4 HP, and this is what I want to say. Um, right, so it's also perfect for a small setup, for a small case, and logic opens up so many different possibilities, um, which I really recommend also getting. I believe this module here was not available last year when I did a video last year. This is Repression from Ritual Electronics. It's a one U comparator. Now I love comparators. I use them a lot with audio. I use them a lot with sequences, splitting sequences, all sorts of different things. It has also a bipolar output, which means that it's perfect also for audio. So you can send audio through it. Drums, it's mm, really crunchy drums you can get with, uh, with running it through a comparator. Um, and again, it's one new, it has a CV input, which is perfect for the uh, threshold. It's small, really like it. Um, and I'm pretty sure, again, I, I didn't mention it last year. Another module that I, I want to mention is Vinca, the VCA form in Struo. Um, we will speak about it more in a second, about it and VCAs in general. But I will just mention that uh, three years, three years I, I'm uh, in the Eurorack world, and this is the first dedicated VCA that I got. I got it just recently. And it's the first VCA, dedicated VCA. There are other VCAs here, uh, or VCA functionality in different modules, like uh, Freak has built-in VCAs. I can use Planar as a VCA. Uh, Microcell has built-in VCAs and so on and so forth. But this is the first dedicated module, or uh, dedicated VCA module that I got anyway. Another module, uh, the last new module that, I, uh, module that I got is this 1F. It's a 2 HP basically fader and crossfader. So it has two inputs that I can use to crossfade between different signals, CV or audio. I can also use it as an attenuator. It has no CV input, so it's not a VCA, but I can use it as an attenuator to bring in uh, voices or modulation or whatever. And I can also send offsets. So what I do usually is I will use it as a macro controller. I will mult the output right to different destinations if it's reverb and filters and stuff like this distortion maybe and i can just with one fader it's also here really comfortable with one fader i can just bring it in and out a sort of a macro controller for the rest of the system and um, so those are uh, the new modules i guess some of the new modules i got uh, maybe also the attenuverter we spoke about before the dual attenuverter here and i guess that's it um, I would like to speak a bit about VCAs in general um, with this uh, uh, VCA from its true. So I'm going to connect everything and I will see you soon. So I want to talk a bit about VCAs. Um, I saw a question on Reddit uh, the other day and I'm not judging, not the question and not the person, really not. It's a legit question. It's a perfectly legit question. He mentioned that he used um, VCA as an attenuator if it's okay. And I think this question comes from the misconception, <laughs> the misconception of VCAs, in my opinion at least. Usually when someone speaks about VCAs, uh, VCA or in any book that mentions uh, VCA, it says voltage controlled amplifier, which might be technically correct. I mean, maybe it is an amplifier, but many VCAs in your rack will only attenuate. They will not amplify anything. So basically, they are voltage-controlled attenuators. Um, and I want to show you this in a second. Now, there are other VCAs that will also invert, which are voltage-controlled attenuverters. Usually, they are called uh, voltage-controlled polarizers. But you can also think of a VCA, if it can invert a signal and it has a CV input, it's a voltage-controlled attenuverter. And some VCAs will also amplify, but many VCAs most of the ones you have probably, uh, most of the ones that I encountered, will not amplify anything. They will only attenuate. I have here an example, and by the way, I will mention that the Vinca from Instruo, just 4 HP, can do all three. It's a voltage-controlled attenuator, it can, it's a voltage-controlled attenuverter, and it's a voltage-controlled amplifier, which is perfect in just 4 HP. So anyway, what I have here is this. Oh, again, I kick the camera. I have here a um, sine wave, right? I'm sending a copy of the sine wave once through um, Vinca to a scope. 
you can see I'm using the scope from VCV because I tried doing this with data, but because of the camera setup I have here, you cannot really see what's going on. So I sent everything to VCV um, here. So you can see uh, the red trace is basically the original sine wave, just going directly from the oscillator to the scope. And you can see already it's oscillating. Even without any amplification or anything, it's there, it's oscillating, and you don't need to amplify anything, right? And I have a copy of it going also to Vinca. So I want to show you when I start bringing, this is the yellow trace. The red is the original, the yellow will be the after the VCA. So I want to show you that I'm starting to bring in, you can see the yellow trace, I'm starting to bring in this signal and you will see that it will reach a certain point which is exactly the same point as the red trace. This is the maximum I go, I cannot amplify anything, it's not amplifying the signal, it's just letting it through or attenuating it. So yes, I can control this with voltage, so it's a voltage controlled attenuator. Right, there is no amplification here whatsoever. And again, many of the VCAs you will encounter will not amplify anything. So yes, you can use them also as attenuators. They are attenuators just with voltage control. So I think it's better, instead of calling a VCA a voltage controlled amplifier, maybe voltage controlled amplitude is better because then it's an amplitude that you can control with voltage. You can attenuate it. Sometimes you can amplify it. Sometimes you can invert it. Like with Vinca, I can also invert the signal. You can see now the yellow trace is inverted, but it will not be amplified. And this again, I can control with voltage. So I can basically invert it. It's a voltage controlled attenuverter even. And if I use the lower part here, it becomes a voltage controlled amplifier because now look at the yellow trace. It's amplified, it goes above the original signal. Again, if you send an oscillator just like this to the output, it will oscillate, it will generate sound without even, no, no need for amplification, right? But now with Vinca, I can also amplify this signal. So again, Vinca is a amplifier, attenuator, attenuverter or polarizer, everything with voltage control. So I think this misconception about VCAs is affecting many people. <laughs> and again, it was a legit question if you can use a VCA as an attenuator. Yes, most VCAs, no, maybe not most, but many VCAs are voltage controlled attenuators. And I think if we stop calling them amplifiers, if we stop calling them voltage controlled amplifiers, maybe voltage controlled amplitude, again, I'm not so sure you will use them much more, not just for audio, they are perfect also for modulation, for slow, um, and of course, if they are DC coupled, there are some VCAs that are not DC coupled that are just meant for audio. But most, uh, yes, most VCAs are also meant for CV. I mean, everything is CV, also audio is CV, but more for slow moving or even sequences, something that is not oscillating at all. Sample and hold sequences, a really nice trick you can do is send a sequence first through a VCA and then to a quantizer and then with the VCA you can sequence the VCA, right? You can control it with voltage and create different variations of the same sequence because you change the level of the sequence, right? So anyway, this is something I want to speak about. Um, I think it's quite important because I know there is the saying you can never have enough VCAs. And this saying, I think, is coming from this misconception about VCAs that people think they are just for audio, they are just for amplifying, and they do not really understand why I need so many VCAs. Um, but you do need VCAs, you want VCAs, you can do all sorts of different things, it's not just for audio. Um, and that's it, I'm going to leave you with some sounds. This was the video, updates, what changed, what didn't. Um, cheers. Thank you.